All right, here's a cold start for you hillbillies that like them so much. I kind of like them too, but Cat 3406C peak motor. Here's what happened. Had an old boy email me looking for a set of jakes for his 3406E, or it may have been a 6NZ truck engine. And normally I just tell people, no, I don't have any because I really don't have any that I want to get rid of. The jakes for these engines are getting pretty tough to come by these days. But I thought, what the hell, I'll just throw a high price out here and he probably won't take them anyway. Lo and behold, he emailed me back and said, yep, I'll take them. So. Now I've got to come up with a set of jakes, and uh, I think my target's right here in front of me. All right, here's the three Jake housings. And here's the kit for them. They call this a tune-up kit. The Jake brake part number for this kit's a 19654. That's the tune-up kit for the 340 series Jake brake, which is uh, what you're gonna find in the 3406E, C15, C16, C18 engine family. Well, excluding a few of the C15 ACERT truck engines like the MXS and NXS, they use a little different top end design. They've got what they call a cat compression brake. It's integrated with the intake valve actuators. But uh, anyway, I won't get off into all that. What I'll do here is show you one of these housings coming apart. I'll show you all the guts out of the inside of it. I'll show you what parts are in the tune-up kit. And I'll show you one of them going back together. Does any of that even make any sense? I don't know. We'll just go with it. So that's the solenoid right there. There's three O-rings on that. You probably can't tell because they're covered in oil, but.
Now these little screws right here, they always want to be stuck. So I take a bit and stick in there and then I, usually if you'll do that first, you can get them to come out. And these springs right here are not very strong. They're just little ones, so you don't have to worry about them too much. There's an outer one and an inner one. And then inside of here is what they call a control valve. Uh, you've got a little snap ring here and there's going to be an outer washer and then a smaller inner washer come on there we go all right so snap ring bigger washer smaller washer and you've got a push rod here with a little spring on the outside of it then there's a piston in that hole. Sometimes those pistons don't really want to come out of there. So what I normally do <clears throat> is take this push rod. It's got a round end on it. If you'll dip it in a little oil, stick it in there. That'll make it stick. And you can pull that out of there like that. Otherwise you'll fumble around with it forever trying to pull it out of there with your finger. And that's one of the pieces you want to make sure you keep running in the same bore that it came out of. Those are the master pistons we just pulled out. Now I need to get the slave piston, pistons pulled out of here. So these are the ones you got to uh, be a little bit careful with. There's some pretty, uh, I mean, I wouldn't say they're big springs, but here's one of them out of the other unit there. If you like your eyes, don't just try to pull the snap ring out of here. They make a tool for this, but what I do, cheap C-clamp. Take a rag and put it on this side here. That just protects the housing from the C-clamp. Let me get this down here where you can see it. This is gonna be real hard to do with this thing in my way, but <clears throat> just a cheap socket here. I'll flip this over where you can see what's going on here in just a second, but or maybe right now. Okay, now you get the idea. Run this down. You don't have to compress this very far, just enough to relieve the pressure on the uh, 
snap rings so you can take it loose and that'll hold everything in there. Keep it from flying out of there and hitting you in the mouth. I've got that compressed a little bit. All right, so there's the snap ring. And then now you can just back this C-clamp off and it'll let the tension off that spring. And that'll all come out of there. So there's the outer washer. Big spring, little spring, push rod, and then there's a big piston in this bore. And that's another one of those pistons that you want to make sure it goes back in that same bore. Let the tension off. Big washer, big spring, little spring, slave piston push rod, and then the piston. And that's it, that's a fully disassembled Jake housing. That's just one big casting now, there's nothing else left in it. And then the other thing that I like to do with these, you're not gonna find this in a manual or an instruction or anything, but this is just something I do. Take a file and I mean, just real light, you're not trying to remove hardly any material or anything like that. You're just wanting to, to knock down any burrs or any high spots on these surfaces where these jakes sit on top of the rocker shafts. So just real light pressure. And you can just kind of true that back up. You're not gonna take off hardly any material. I'm just barely, barely pushing down at all. And then once the file starts to glide pretty smooth without catching anywhere, you're done. Okay, so that's what disassembly looks like. All these housings look real good. Didn't see anything wrong with any of the boards. They're nice and smooth, so should make a real good set of jakes. Next thing I'll do is get uh, the housings all cleaned up and the parts that we took out of the housings that go back in the housings, which is most of this stuff. Most of that is not in that kit. And uh, when I get all that done, I'll bust into the kit and start putting these things back together. I'll show you that when I get there. Just about got everything cleaned up here. The cleaning is by far the most time consuming part of this whole deal. Got one housing left to go, so you can see the difference here between a clean housing and a dirty one. What I do with these, uh, I've got a hot water pressure washer, so I take them out there and I blow them off with that, and I'll blow that hot water down through all the holes and passages and everything. And then by the time I get them all cleaned up, they'll be so hot that you can just barely pick them up with your hand. So then I take compressed air and blow them off and blow that compressed air through all the holes and passages. And because of the heat from the hot water, they'll dry right out. Then I spray them down with WD-40 and spray that down in the holes and stuff and blow compressed air through them again. And when I get done, then they're nice and clean and there's a thin coat of oil on them and they're good to go.
All right, everything's cleaned up. I'm ready to start putting them back together now. Some clean oil here. Here's what you get in the kit. So you only get about half the springs. You get new control valves. You get new retainer plates for the control valve springs. You get new screws and O-rings for the solenoid. So I'll get the tripod set up and I'll let you watch one of these go back together. All right, first thing I'll do is put the slave pistons in. So dip them in oil. Stick them in. Run it up and down and work that oil in. And I've got these, like I said, the pistons are going back in the same holes they came out of. You don't absolutely have to do that. All the holes and all the pistons should be the same size. So if you get them mixed up, it's not the end of the world. It's just usually a good idea to keep parts that run in companion with each other back in the same place that they came from when you can. Because if it worked before, you put it back the same way it was, it should work again. So the next thing we need here is a push rod. Take this, dip the end of it in a little bit of oil, stick it in. Need an outer spring, dip the end of that in some oil, put it in. Inner spring, same thing, oil. Again, this is where it would be nice to have that tool, but uh, I've always been able to make this work. All right, so the C clamp's gonna push on the washer. That's gonna compress both those springs down in this bore. And you gotta get it down in here far enough that it'll expose the snap ring groove in the housing so you can put the snap ring in, which is what retains all this in here. So I'll start cranking this down and this should go easy. If it starts to feel like it's binding, you wanna stop and figure out why. You just got to get that below that snap ring groove. Should be there now. So now for a snap ring. This tripod's right in my way again. All right, that should be down in there far enough. Now we can back this off. And the snap ring should pop into the groove. And that one should be done. You just wanna make sure that that snap ring is seated in that groove all the way around. And that one is, so that's good. Now, same thing on the other side, dip the end of the push rod in oil, stick it in, big spring, oil, in, little spring, washer, this one's going fairly straight, I think it's good enough to make it work. All right, snap ring. All right. Just pushing that snap ring down a little further. And now backing it off. like it's in.
Yep, we're good there. All right, now, flip it like this. Let me see, I gotta keep that. Okay, yeah. So this piston goes here. Master piston, dip it in the oil, go in the hole. Push rod, oil. Run it up and down, make sure it's free and smooth and all that good stuff. Oil in the hole, up and down. So what you've got here, you've got an outer washer and a smaller inner washer. So the inner washer goes on first. Well, you're actually, you don't need the spring. So there's a spring, little oil on it. And it slides down over the push rod like that. <clears throat> and then the small washer goes on. I like the part number facing out, makes no difference though. And then the bigger washer, same thing. Part number out. These are clean, that's just discoloration. And then the snap ring. Most of the time it's easier just to push it all down like that at once, get the washer started in, and then try to try to grab your snap ring after that. There we go. All right, so that's gonna be free. That's gonna wiggle around. You wanna make sure, again, that that snap ring is all the way in that groove. It's not wanting to pop into place. It's, it's actually below the snap ring groove. It needs to come out. So I'll squeeze it just a little. There we go. So then just check it out. Make sure that it's in the groove all the way around. Okay, one more of those, spring, a little bit of oil on the end of it, stick it on there. Small washer. Part number out. Bigger washer. Part number out. Like I said, that makes no difference. That's just, that's just what I like to do. Doesn't matter how they face. All right, the washer started in the hole there. Now if I can just grab the snap ring, get it to start in the hole, I'll have her made. There we go. Needs to go in a little further on one side. Yeah. All right, it's not quite seated yet. It's it's below the groove there in one spot. There it was, it just popped right in, felt it. Next thing is control valves. So dip it in the oil. Stick it in the hole. Inner spring. That's gonna go all the way down in there just about got an outer spring, get that little oil, and this one's not going to go in nearly as far, there's a shoulder inside that hole that that's going to sit on, so then you get new retainer plates with this kit and screws, so what I do, stick the screw in the plate and grab my bit, Put this on here, push it in.
Try to get that screw to start there by hand. There we go. And then just use your thumb, hold some pressure on it, and snug her up. Straighten that up just a little bit. And you don't want to get too carried away here. Just snug it up good and there you go. Now the control valve on the other side, same exact thing. Dip it in the oil. Stick it in the hole. Spring will bottom it out. The other spring, dip it in a little oil. In the hole. And the retainer plate. Now we've got the adjusters. Get the end of that some oil. These just screw in here. Well, That's all you need to do there. Those will get adjusted when they run the overhead on it when they put the jakes on. All right, the only thing left is the solenoid, so there's three O-rings. Small O-ring, the one that goes in first or at the bottom, you want to put it in on its own. So you want to dip it in oil, stick it in the hole, take a little flat screwdriver and just bottom it out down in there. And then take your solenoid, top O-ring, which is the biggest one, dip it in oil, stick it on here. Make sure you don't roll it. Make sure that's coated in oil. Middle O-ring is white. And then you just screw this in. All done. Well, I think I got a pretty good product here, but just realized that I almost screwed up, which is fine because it almost doesn't matter anyway. But since I pulled these off that haul truck out there and it's a 24 volt system, these Jakes have got 24 volt solenoids on them and they're going on an on highway truck engine, which is a 12 volt system. So I'm gonna have to change these solenoids out for 12 volt solenoids. But that's not a big deal. I've got a pile of them over there and it'll only take about 10 minutes. So anyway, I'm not saying that that's the right way to do all that. And I'm not saying that it's the wrong way either, but that's how I do it. It's so simple that a untrained, uneducated, non-certified hillbilly like me can handle it. Guess that's all I got for this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.